So following a defeat in the first game of the Champions League against Dynamo Zagreb away from home, Arsenal have absolutely topped themselves by, you know, they've outdone themselves really by losing at home 3-2 to Olympiacos. One of the most bizarre games of football that I've ever watched. Not a scoreline that I predicted. And after a comfortable, in fact, exhilarating performance of the weekend in a 5-2 win away from home against Leicester, I expected a victory going into last night's game. Bitterly disappointing in the end. Um, a really average performance from Arsenal. A very, very bang average performance. Lots of players like Mesut Ozil, Santi Cazorla, Oxlade Chamberlain not taking ch chances in this game, not taking opportunities when they fall to them. And just generally very unconvincing from Arsenal. Like I say, a very average display all round. We continuously glamorise getting a top four finish, but the bottom line is we don't really deserve to be in this competition because we don't put the effort and the ambition out there to go and win it. Why are we changing goalkeepers in a game that we must win? David Ospina is a player that I've got a lot of respect for. I've got a lot of time for him. He did a good job for us last season, but we've got a more elite, a more standing keeper in Petr Cech. Why is he not starting a game that we have to win? And... Like only Wenger can answer why he played in the game against Leicester if he did have a minor niggle that was found out before the game. None of this makes sense to me. And the post-match reaction after the game from Arsene Wenger, saying that um, when, when asked by BT what, why, why he decided to change the keeper, and he comes out by saying, I know things you don't know, which is an arrogant reply. I mean, what, why, why is he giving that reply just as a simple question about a team selection? It's... Um, Sour, really, I think. And the, Emir and the Emirates last night, the atmosphere was pretty sour. And it's just left us in a very precarious position in our Champions League group standing. Because now we've got Bayern Munich back-to-back, -back, which... If we're going to see the three against Olympiacos, which is a team that Bayern beat, and then they also put five goals past Dynamo Zagreb, I dread to think what they're going to do to us. They are going to absolutely bend us over if we go to Bayern and play anything like we did last night. So... Definitely not very excited for those games against Bayern. I think we'll be lucky to come away with a point. And the best thing I can hope for is two points out of both of those games, which is going to be very, very difficult when you've got players like Gertz and Lewandowski running the show against how poor our defence was last night. We don't stand a chance. We don't have a hope in hell against Bayern Munich. But hopefully we can turn it around and pin in a lot of hope on us trying to get out of this group stage because we're, leave, we're in a situation now where we're, where we're relying on the likes of Olympiacos to slip up. If Olympiacos get a victory against Dynamo Zagreb, who... Yeah, which they could quite comfortably do. Um, it leaves us in a very difficult situation. If they beat, if Olympiacos beats Dynamo Zagreb twice, it leaves us in a very awkward situation because then we're kind of out, and that's just really hard hitting. It really is. Um, so I mean, the way I see it, we're practically beyond reach of getting out of the group stage. It's not impossible. Mathematically, we can still do it, but it's just it's just really disappointing. I would certainly hope that. Um, you know, there's a miracle. We really need a miracle at this moment in time to get out of the group stage. But the game itself, let's talk about that. We started with a team that had a few uh, drastic changes to it. First of all, Kieran Gibbs coming in for Nacho Monreal. Didn't have too much of a problem with that. David Ospina coming in for Petr Cech, like I've already mentioned, completely needless. And we saw Chamberlain come in for Aaron Ramsey. I actually think it was a team that a lot of people were excited to see. Chamberlain, Sanchez, Walker all starting up top. Mesut Ozil in behind pulling the strings. Disappointing performance from Mesut Ozil, but um, like so many other Arsenal players, was, dis was uh, average throughout the course of the match. And uh, it's an exciting team, one that was filled with pace, should have done really well on the counter-attack. And for the opening 10 minutes, we actually looked like a good side. We looked like we were going out there, we were bombarding Olympiacos, had a very good chance through Oxlade Chamberlain, had another good chance through Fiat Walcott. Could have been 2 up in the opening 10 minutes, but unfortunately we didn't take our chances when they came to us. It was pretty much... I wouldn't say it was all Arsenal, but we were dominating things in terms of possession. Don't get me wrong, Olympiacos are very good on the counter-attack. They look good going forward. They've got some very exciting players in their squad. But unfortunately, it was them that broke the deadlock. And it was rather unfortunate for us. Um, but, I mean, Olympiacos took their chance when they came to it, when it came to them. They defended well. And it's, again, a set-piece routine from Arsenal that we failed to defend properly. It was a huge def deflection off Oxlade Chamberlain. Uh, David Ospina was never going to get anywhere near it, and it's 1-0 to Olympiacos. Fortunately, though, a couple of minutes later, Walcott levels the playing. Excellent work by Alexis Sanchez playing Walcott in, and Walcott slots it past the keeper, who could have done a little bit better on this, but nonetheless, 1-1. Another goal from Fiat Walcott. Big positive we can take from this game. And at that point, you think, you know, we, we've conceded the sparkles into life, but let's go on and get the win now. But no, because David Ospina had different ideas in his head, and he, he just absolutely humiliated himself. I don't know how this could have got any more embarrassing for David Ospina, Practically just putting the ball into his own net. I don't even know how he managed to do it. It was awful from Ospina. And he just, it's like Sunday league stuff from him. I really don't expect it of a keeper that's on like a five-figure salary each week. So yeah, 2-1-2 two -two Olympiacos heading into half-time. Not the result we would have wanted. But given the talent we had on display, we should have got out into that second half and turned things around. Which um, 
It looked like we were going to do when Alexis Sanchez got a goal to level to play at 2-2. It was great work by uh, Aaron Ramsey and Santa Gazzola involved in the build-up and then playing it through to Fiat Walcott who played a delicate cross into Alexis Sanchez, completely unmarked and a wonderful header to level to play at 2-2. But then a total lapse of concentration straight down the other end and it's 3-2 to Olympiacos. Now this was actually a really nice goal. Cambiasso, I believe, lofted it over Gabriel. The uh, wingman comes in behind, plays it in to uh, Alfred of all people and it's 3-2 to Olympiacos. A, a guy that I think had one goal or something for Real Sociedad in the uh, La Liga last season. So it just shows determination. Players that wanted to win more on the night and unfortunately we've come away with nothing to our name. At home it's bitterly disappointing. Two games now that we should have got six points in. Personally I would have rather lost to Spurs at White Hart Lane and had six points in the competition that actually matters to us. And uh, yeah, it's just a feeling of deflation really. I just can't get my head around why we glamorise getting a top four finish if we're just not going to actually try our best 11 in the tournament. It doesn't make any sense to me. And we've got a really uphill battle now to uh, actually get out of the group stage. I mean, after four games, we could still have no points on the board, which is very, very probable. So yeah, not the best of times to be an Arsenal fan. It just really shows our inconsistency, our arrogance within the team. We've got Man United up next. Not a game I'm looking forward to in any way, shape or form. They're going to pounce on a vulnerable Arsenal team but I mean hopefully this result won't transfer over into the Premier League because that's what we've got to focus on now I don't I never thought we were going to win the Champions League but it would have been nice to at least try in the competition itself but now we've got to focus on the Premier League and hopefully we can get something at the weekend against Manchester United negative to take from today apart from well yesterday apart from the loss Laura Cashel is injured which is a huge 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 blow to us going into the game against United I believe he's had his hamstring in so Mertzak will come in who didn't look at all convincing when he entered the field of play last night so yeah, uh, not a great time to be an Arsenal fan, but like I say, maybe we'll be able to turn it around in the weekend with a win against Manchester United. That's the only way that this result can be rectified, by getting a win at the Emirates on Sunday. But anyway, thank you all for watching. If you do want to cheer me up, please do hit that like button. Subscribe to Arsenal Fan TV as well as my own channel, AFC Game by Game. As always, I'll be talking to you soon.